Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Anne-Marie Smith. I'm the Product Manager for Mass Spectrometry and Chromatography at ECD Labs. Um, today, I'm going to uh, talk to you about how some of our software can help for uh, impurity workflows. So detection and identification of impurities play an important uh, role in the development and manufacturing of products, whether it be a drug, fragrance, or otherwise. Um, the levels of impurities are controlled and need to be identified for reasons such as maybe it's a mutagenic impurity. So today I will focus on how software can help in two key areas of impurity workflows. The first um, being the development of an optimal analytical method. So whether it's GC or LC, um, and this is somewhere where the software could help in optimizing things like separation of components and the runtime. The second area is in identification of impurities, which is generally done by NMR and NS. Um, for today, we're going to consider the NS tools that we have, um, and this will involve looking at the resolution of the instrument as well as fragmentation. So to focus on the first area, um, we'll look at chromatography software solutions that can help with method optimization. Um, developing a single method that can resolve all impurities or degradants um, is not a simple task. At AC2 Labs, we have several tools that can help aid in method development, whether you're looking for something to help you get started with developing methods, um, tools that will work with the data that you've already acquired, or tools that can suggest methods and actually run your instruments. Um, we've got something for all of those. So in the next few slides, I'll show you a few snippets of what's available and explain how they can help in developing better methods for impurities. Um, we won't go through all of the tools that are listed here, but if you'd like any additional information, um, you can find that on our website. So um, searching reference methods and using predictive tools can help you um, to get a superior starting point and allow you to intellectually uh, optimize your method. In the software, there are tools that can help you select the right column for your study, as well as tools to help with pH selection and buffer suggestion. Uh, one of the tools we have is Autochrome, and that actually has a wizard in it that can help define a strategy for optimizing several parameters like pH, gradient, um, and temperature, while setting success criteria like resolution, retention factor, and runtime before um, you even run a set of injections. Once your strategy has been defined, the system will suggest experiments and allow you to execute it. After obtaining your runs, you can automatically track peaks with either UV or MS, and um, the robustness of the method can also be determined through software simulation. After doing all of this work, you probably want um, a way to store or communicate your results, which is available. Prior to starting method development, um, users can establish sound scientific insight of their samples in the system. Uh, this can be done through predicting physical and chemical properties, such as log D, of compounds with known structures that could be in the sample or are suspected to be structurally similar to the impurities. This is useful for determining the ideal uh, solvent pH. There's also a buffer suggestion tool that will help calculate experimental concentrations required to achieve target pH values. The column selection tool can help you determine the minimal set of orthogonal columns to, to screen the maximum amount of specificity. The columns can be compared visually by the radar graphs and the Tanaka parameters that you see on the right here. These two tools not only offer a better starting point, but also provide justification for the chosen pH and column. Jumping forward a little, um, you've determined a possible method to start with, what columns pH buffer to use. Um, the system suggests the experiments for you to run and you've run them now. Um, so now you're ready to think about robustness. Um, one way to visualize the robustness of your method without actually running a large series of experiments is to use chromatographic simulation um, for uh, your separations. Um, so this is looking at your entire design space. Um, this allows you to predict the impact of adjusting method conditions such as pH, temperature, and gradient, um, and also the solvent ratio against your success criteria. Um, so success criteria could be something like your runtime, retention factor, uh, maybe resolution, and you can do this without performing countless experiments. 
meaning that you can actually create a method where a small change in temperature or gradient, which can happen when you transfer methods between labs or different instruments, won't dramatically influence the quality of the separation. In addition to designing a robust method, it's also good to know where the edges of failure occur, which can be seen easily on resolution maps. So here we can um, see both 2D and 3D resolution maps. The white dots that you see are the actual experiments that were run. Um, and the scale on the side shows you the improvement in separation as you move from blue to red. If you click around on this resolution map, you can actually see the simulated chromatogram, which allows you to see the separation between the critical pair. Um, so ensuring that you're kind of in a region where there's not a lot of color change close by would help indicate that you have a robust method. Once you've done all this work um, mentioned about uh, wanting to um, communicate those results. So um, this can be done with customized reports um, that those reports could contain elements described earlier. So this could be the strategy that was involved in optimization, chromatogram spectra, uh, maybe tables of methods um, that you evaluated, uh, the resolution maps, and any of this information can also be stored in a database. Now that we hopefully have a good method, uh, we can look at the second area of importance that I mentioned, which would be impurity identification. So there's several software tools that can aid in the development, or sorry, aid in including tools that help in determining the best formula for an accurate, for an accurate mass. Um, it could predict fragmentation, so that is the MS Fragmenter tool that you see in the bottom left, um, or search databases for things that have um, maybe similar spectra. Again, here I'm showing a large list of tools that are available, and we'll talk about a few of them over the next few minutes. So one simple tool that we have that maybe gets you a little bit closer to identification is formula generation, and this can be done for single ions or for full spectra. Um, you can set the list of elements and the number of them that you anticipate for your structure, this the impurity that you're interested in. Um, the narrower the range, the fewer formula that will be generated, but hopefully that means the more accurate it should be. Um, you can also set up the ionization parameters, so whether it's going to be a radical cation, singly, multiply charged species, um, and the software will generate formula for you and display a formula fit quality, or here you can see it as FFQ, um, allowing you to easily assess how well the formula matches your spectra. So here um, I've shown a completed example of what we can do in the software. So this is using several different tools. Um, so we could uh, detect peaks. Um, in this case, uh, we're using software to find components of interest. Um, so it's extracting the XICs um, and that extraction and um, detection of components is happening based on uh, signal to noise, peak shape similarity and abundance threshold. Um, Along with this, the addicts are also uh, li automatically labeled on the trace. So if you had, say, a sodium potassium addict, uh, maybe a multiply charged species, you can see those, those labels appearing. Um, and then the found components were searched in databases. For any found structure, we can actually use the software to do in silico prediction to identify the fragments on the MS2 spectrum and assign a score for the percent of the spectrum that had been assigned. Those fragments that were found are also indicated on the, the spectrum itself and can also be found in a summary table for you. Now, on the last slide, I mentioned uh, searching databases. So we have a few tools for this. Uh, one tool is uh, called IXCR, um, and it will do the componentization and search databases by spectra. So it can search um, commercially available databases, such as the Wiley databases or in-house uh, user-created databases, um, and give you an HQI or a hit quality index value for the hits that are found. Um, you can also use the NIST MS search algorithm um, as part of this and search the NIST database. Alternatively, you can search PubChem, which contains more than 100 million structures, um, and you can do this search by mass elemental composition, um, you can include include or exclude lists to help narrow down those hits. Um, the results of this would be a table of structures 
and a formula fit quality or FFQ um, score that would help you assess whether the structure is actually a good fit. If um, you want to, you can also choose to run the in silico fragmentation as part of this um, and get the spectrum of scans score that I had mentioned previously. So finally, similar to what I mentioned for um, optimizing your chromatographic methods, we have customizable reports uh, and databases that you can store this information in so that you can easily communicate. So uh, just to summarize today, we looked at ways that software can help um, in a couple different ways for impurity studies, um, one being the development of a robust uh, chromatographic method um, with good separation of peaks, and the second being identification of impurities using accurate mass or tandem mass um, and a variety of other software tools. Thanks for your time.